Thank, Thank you very you much indeed for your time. Thank you. And could I invite our fifth proposer, uh, Councillor Jim O'Boyle, uh, to the lectern, please. And for the purposes of our records, again, if you could just state your name uh, and organisation, please. Councillor, <coughs> Councillor Jim O'Boyle, uh, Coventry City Council. I'm the Cabinet Member for Jobs and Regeneration. Great. Thank you. The floor is yours. So thank you. Good afternoon, everybody. And thank you very much for inviting me today to uh, make this pitch to you. Coventry is the birthplace of the British motor industry. Innovation and invention is in our DNA, and we are ready to help lead the way in the public transport of the future. Let me talk to you about very light rail. At this moment in time, France and Germany are racing ahead. France has 28 light rail systems, Germany 57. Britain has just nine. Coventry is hoping to help change all of that. It appears, seems to us, that perhaps the Treasury doesn't think investment in light rail outside of London is worth it. And of course, our laws make it more expensive to install. Coventry is addressing all of those challenges. The core technology in trams has stayed stagnant for over a century, but we believe they belong in the heart of our cities, helping people get out and about without damaging our environment. As I've said, Coventry has a long, proud history as a hub of transport innovation, and today we are working with very light rail innovators and R&D specialists in the region. We are completely rethinking trams and their track. Existing trams start at circa £25 million per kilometre and can rise to over £100 million in difficult city centres, with disruption lasting sometimes well over two years. We, in Coventry, are targeting just £10 million per kilometre, with disruption to businesses and the public measured in weeks rather than years. That is an incredible saving and would revolutionise the use of trams in our country and around the world. CVLR, as we call it, has already been incredibly well received by industry and is making great progress. It is delivered to groundbreaking innovations, an innovative vehicle and a first-of-its-kind track. Most trams can't turn tight corners and need extensive, expensive and even <coughs> ugly overhead line equipment. CVLR is battery-powered and has a turning radius of 15 metres, so it can run on tighter roads. That means retrofitting into cities is not only doable, it's faster and it's cheaper. We are ready to deliver in this in Coventry, making our city centre a living lab for CVLR. Then there's the track. Before a tram is installed, millions of pounds needs to be invested to divert utilities. Our track will allow most of that equipment to stay in the ground slashing costs and disruption. New materials will allow the track form to be thinner but just as strong and its design means it can be installed at a pace unheard of in the industry. Together, these two breakthroughs could unlock high quality transport investment in our nations and regions. Both the vehicle and the track has been built in the Midlands, creating jobs. The challenge now is to ensure government departments and industry work together so that these very light rail invasions can be delivered. But there are challenges to overcome. Our first challenge is the Transport and Works Act. The process applies to all rail-based vehicle systems but is slow and costly and a cutting-edge system like ours needs legislation that is fit for the 21st century. We can speed up delivery but we need to speed up the Transport Works Act process too. Our second challenge is of course finding the money. The CVLR scheme has incredible support at all levels, including cross-party support across the region. We applied to the Department of Transport and the Combined Authority for Funds to build a trailblazing city demonstrator in Coventry, but like many projects, a lack of clarity over the final allocation of funding creates delays and disruption. Innovation requires ambition. Now we need the government to trust us to deliver. The third challenge is autonomy. I've spoken today about reducing installation costs, but we can go even further. Brilliant work is being done to support autonomous cars, but the same focus isn't there for trams. So we're calling on government to accelerate its work on the automation of trams in the road. As you can tell, Coventry is very excited by the prospect of very light rail. Together we can change the face of public transport, but first 
We in Coventry believe the committee must investigate the three major challenges I have outlined today. As a reminder, there are the Transport and Works Act, funding and autonomy. There is the fourth in there, which of course is battery technology, but perhaps that's for another day. These three areas, if taken seriously by government, would usher in a new era of low cost, high quality and sustainable public transport for all and tackle climate change for future generations. We are that close as I am to the time. Thank you. Well done. You and the prize for hitting it, hitting <laughs> the end point. Uh, thank you.